Severe warning to the whole auto industry, Ford's CEO just stopped EV manufacturing due to the company's severe EV issue. Customers are retaliating against Ford in force, with the majority of them rejecting their EVs outright. Ford is suffering from poor demand and making a significant loss on the sale of its EVs. 92,000 unsold Ford electric vehicles stacked up at dealer lots of manufacturing workers laid off and 4 billion, 500 million lost on EVs in a single year. This will have a profound impact on the whole auto sector and is nothing short of disastrous. But it was all a flip. Now that electric vehicles are losing, CEO Jim Farley has said that Ford would intensify its efforts to provide the kind of inexpensive combustion engine automobiles that the average person enjoys. Why are EV buyers rejecting them so strongly while manufacturers are simultaneously ceasing manufacturing of their flagship models? Ford decided to stop investing in AVs and instead began spending billions on gas-powered vehicles after realizing this. And how has GM's position also altered in response to Ford's decision to entirely stop producing electric vehicles? You may believe you understand what's happening, but you are very ignorant of the scope of this. The F-150 Lightning, which was once considered Ford's premier truck, is going to become extinct. Ford startled everyone when they physically pulled the plug on their electric vehicle. The corporation has revealed via recent pronouncements that the F-150 Lightning manufacturing shift has come to a dramatic stop. Ford offered a litany of justifications when asked why this was occurring, but the underlying issue is poor demand. Ford is now suffering as a result of their decision to rebrand themselves as a luxury automobile manufacturer and forget how to build vehicles that were cheap. How severe is it? Doesn't 4 billion, 500 million bucks sound awful? When one looks closer, the sales numbers are chilling. Sales of the F-150 Lightning fell by a frightening 46 in only the third quarter of 2023. For Ford, this pattern is not a unique occurrence. Same ghost seems to be battling the whole electric vehicle sector. The country's showroom floors were home to an unsettling vision of some 92,000 unsold electric vehicles collecting dust in 2023, despite a 350 increase in production. The average time to sell an electric vehicle is 92 days, whereas the average time to sell a combustion vehicle is 40 days. Furthermore, not many dealers want these EVs on their properties. Ford has already dropped pricing on its 2023 F-150 Lightning model, giving substantial incentives and taking advantage of federal tax changes in a desperate bid to boost demand. However, there's no denying that the Lightning's brilliance is fading, even with savings of up to $15,000. But why is Ford facing such a dilemma? There is a significant discrepancy between what companies like Ford are attempting to offer and what customers are really wanting to purchase, according to CAA analyst Garrett Nelson. Right now, with the state of the charging infrastructure and range issues, electric vehicles are just not feasible. Even if you were to get one, the sticker price would probably cost you a lot of money. This is detrimental not just to Ford, but also to the unlucky employees of EV. Ford has announced significant reductions in employment and layoffs, even though it has let go of about 700 employees who were working on the Lightning. Ford wants to be perceived as a startup and wants everyone to forget about their enormous losses, even if they are selling their EVs at a loss. Ford Vice President Darren Palmer was recently caught on camera stating that it's a little early to worry about an excess of electric vehicles on dealer lots. There is still a strong need for us. No matter how hard they try to spin it, they just speak for themselves. According to recent sources, Ford is reportedly preparing for a big $4 billion, $500 million loss on its EV business this year, after a hefty $2 billion, $100 million loss on the division last year, as EV sales declined in the second quarter. Three factors are the main causes of this. The first is the high cost of investment. Moving from internal combustion engines highs to electric vehicles requires a substantial investment in RD, production, infrastructure, and training, much like any other disruptive move. Its intention to build a $3 billion, $500 million battery facility in Michigan demonstrates its commitment to this, even while businesses like Tesla have moved their manufacturing to less expensive locations like China. Ford is an American automaker that also has to provide its employees good salaries. Why wouldn't they too? We have a poor pricing strategy when they are also profiting from government tax benefits. Ford revealed a price drop for its electric F-150 Lightning pickup truck in an effort to gain a bigger market share 
and stay competitive. Cheaper raw battery materials are the reason for the price reduction. Even if such a decision may pay off in the long run, it may cause short-term financial difficulties. However, it's also important to remember that Ford dealers are losing money on their cars by overpricing them and failing to sell them. Furthermore, I'm not referring about tiny markups. Consider earning five to eight thousand dollars for each EV sold. More about it in the video's final moments. A firm presence in the electric vehicle sector is essential for long-term viability. When CFO John Lawler noted, when EV businesses expand their skills and market share, they often experience losses. As a traditional car maker, Ford may be taking use of its well-established brand to offset these losses while continuing to innovate. However, I fear they won't be able to endure for very long on brand image alone if they don't sell. Ford has finally acknowledged that there is still a significant market for gas-powered cars despite the move towards electric vehicles. Ford CEO Jim Farley recently spoke on the ongoing argument between gas-powered and electric vehicles. Ford and Albemel Energy Storage have established a partnership that would provide lithium hydroxide for battery production in order to facilitate the production of 3 million electric vehicles by 2030. This does not imply, however, that the corporation is abandoning its conventional ICE automobiles. Ford Blue, the division devoted to hybrid and internal combustion engine vehicles, has ambitious growth goals. In this speech, Ford Blue President Kumar Gaitra announced intentions to boost model production by 160,000 units over the course of the next 10 months. In line with Ford, General Motors has also reiterated its commitment to internal combustion engine cars while increasing their investments in electric vehicles. Jim has said that it would be spending more than $2 billion this year on new SUVs, full-size trucks, and VATE engines. Ford has changed its organizational structure, designating Model E for EVs alone and Ford Blue for ICE and hybrid cars. For GM, Farley pointed out that combustion engines are still crucial to the American market, particularly for bigger cars. Even if electric vehicles are the way of the future, the state of the market today encourages the development and manufacture of gas and diesel cars since they are still lucrative, especially for trucks and SUVs. Even if EV sales are down, legislators and the general public are strongly divided on the issue of outlawing internal combustion engine cars and requiring a swift switch to electric vehicles. According to Ford officials, internal combustion engines are not extinct. The vice president of Ford USA remarked that propulsion won't be as binary as some had assumed. The variety of propulsion options available between pure ice and pure BEV is astounding. Ford ranks third in the market for hybrid cars after Toyota and Honda, suggesting that there is still a large demand for these kinds of cars. Ford's move to minimize the number of F-150 variations is an example of how reducing the number of variants in vehicle production may enhance quality, expedite manufacture, and lower cycle time and cost. If outlawing ICE forces automakers to create a large range of E-variants without making the necessary supply chain improvements, it may offset these efficiency advantages. Businesses may encounter new, unanticipated supply chain difficulties while attempting to get EV-specific components as a result of the ICE restriction. This is due to the fact that China provides the lion's share of these resources, and it is unwise to have such power in its hands. In this, Jim Farley is not alone. The CEO of Jeep also recently labeled the ICE prohibition as utterly ridiculous and forewarned the industry of grave societal repercussions should it be implemented by 2035. His primary worry is that the middle class may not be able to purchase electric cars due to their high cost. The CEOs of Mercedes and BMW agree that the ICE prohibition was a mistake. They are presently developing some groundbreaking new technologies like ammonia and hydrogen fuel cells, which will enable them to lower costs and maybe provide customers more options. Ford has reaffirmed the belief that ICE will not be disappearing anytime soon. They will now concentrate on hybrid powertrains with internal combustion engines. Popular models including the Maverick, Ranger, and Explorer Hybrid are getting stronger hybrid systems and new improvements. The automotive sector is in complete chaos as a result of Ford's sudden suspension of EVE manufacturing, which includes the discontinuation of their best-selling F-150 Lightning model. It seems like Ford's enormous bet on the electric world is collapsing. Is it too late for Ford to figure out what consumers really want, though? Late is preferable than never. The primary worry is that maybe we all jumped the gun by purchasing electric cars too quickly. 
It remains to be seen what the future holds for Ford, but Jim Farley is defying the industry norm. Do you believe that a ban on combustion engines is necessary? Tell me too, are EVs a fraud? Tell me in the comments section below. We just posted a video on important news that might harm the electric vehicle market as a whole. If you want to be genuinely surprised by what's going to happen with EVs, definitely check it out.